Здравейте, приятели! Отново сме на летище София и по-специално на Терминал 2 за второто интервю от поредицата интервюта, което ви обещах да направя с менеджерски екип на SoftConnect. Днес мой гост ще бъде Андръш Абел, който преко отговаря за развитието на Терминал 2. Okay, so my name is Andre Shaba. Um, I graduated from university uh, back in Hungary, majoring in English studies, and then I uh, and ended up working for, for the airport in Budapest. And I took various steps ahead, just going to, to management role. And basically I was working for 16 years at Budapest Airport as a uh, first security uh, manager, of the airport and then later on I moved to the term to terminal management which was overviewing uh, the whole airport operations, terminal operations. Um, basically we say from curbside, from parking areas to the to the to the boarding areas, boarding gates. So 16 plus years in, in, in terminal management, almost one year in, in a different area and then I ended up in Munich Airport working for them. Um, um, I don't know, many people know, I think, that um, the, the current CEO of Munich Airport used to be a Budapest Airport CEO. Mm -hmm. So basically he, he experienced everything in Budapest and then he moved to, to, uh, to Munich. It is a challenge, it is a challenge. It's a, when we were discussing it in Munich, uh, how to move on, uh, what, what projects. It was interesting for me to, 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 to find a, a location which is, which is similar like the previous position I had in Budapest. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's copy-paste, but it's very similar. I mean, all the processes, all the uh, activities that we, do, that we are doing now is like, it's just reliving again, like, 15 years ago. So it is, uh, uh, I would say I have this benefit, uh, this resource from the past, and this is something that I can easily use here in this environment. As I said, the culture is a bit different. So it is, uh, in Budapest, we were bringing in a lot of German attitude, uh, like um, to the point, to the, to the procedures. And this is something that we have to establish here as well. And then I truly believe that everything is, um, if you are running a, a facility, successfully um, if if everybody who worked for that facility know exactly what to do so there are very clear instructions as well as very clear ownership of the of the property so we expect uh, all employees to know that um, um, the facility belongs to who even though I know it's in concession but but the people working here should understand that this is their uh, their house their facility so it is something that they have to uh, if they see a problem they own they must own this problem if they see a leakage somewhere they have to report it they have to take to take after and this is something that I mentioned it culturally challenging because it has not been the same in the past that we noticed so it is something that is um, it has to be changed we we are here to change the mindset um, I know it will take many years to do that and uh, many times I mentioned to to the to CEO and all the management that we have to be patient. It is not happening overnight. We can we can introduce new 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 chairs, new seating. We can we can introduce a lot of you know um, uh, things in the terminal. But as long as you you're not changing the mindset of people working um, and to bring in the customer-oriented attitude. Um, it, is, um, it is a challenge. To be honest with you, um, managing a terminal environment is, is fun. Every day is different. You cannot have the very same day. Um, um, you cannot plan because, because um, something can always happen in the terminal. There are irregularities with airlines, you know, flight delays, um, passengers missing the flight, um, and this is the part which is which is challenging and interesting. 
and what we try to communicate with our staff that even in these situations they have to be calm. So as long as they are calm and there are processes to follow, um, it can be done successfully, I truly believe that. Many people ask here, okay, because we talk about a lot, lot about this five-star experience, so what is the five-star experience? And it must say that for everybody it's different, uh, because um, if, we, if we have a facility, uh, and as a passenger or a customer you are entering the facility, and the, the, uh, the facility meets your expectations, it is a four-star four experience, mm -hmm. because everything works there. Yeah. Five-star experience is when you, when you have your expectations, but the, uh, but the experience is beyond your, your expectations. If you go to Dubai, uh, uh, you, you see that a lot of people pay attention, pay attention to very, very small details. You know, how, let's say, if you go to a restaurant and just look at a menu, how professionally the letters are written, whether it is easily, easily understandable. So they are put a lot of effort into the, into the beyond experience. And this is something that we have to um, communicate here. Uh, we are sitting in a Costa Cafe now. Um, it's, you get your coffee and it's a good quality. That's, um, that, this, is that, that is, this is what you expect. This is four star. Yes. But if you get, get a, if the, if the staff engages in a conversation with you and you, you, you leave the counter with a, with a very positive um, feeling that is beyond your expectations, that is the five star experience. You don't have to be in a five star hotel. It's like, in a, it's like if you get a very decent product at a cafe, but the, you get something extra on top. It's not necessarily um, connected to, to money or costs. It is something, maybe a, a smile or a, a kind of a, like a conversation Just at a the small gesture. <laughs> a gesture, yes, yeah. So, so usually the five star experience is something that is beyond your expectations. It's not. It cannot be measured. It's interesting that um, there's a you know the four star can, because it's subjective. It's always subjective uh, what the expectation is. Um, there are certain areas uh, that you know the five the five star status is, is handed out by the Skytrax you know organization, um, and they they usually do um, surveys, and they know exactly what are the areas that we have to look at, like uh, how to communicate with passengers, what kind of uh, 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 points are in the process that has to be that have to be perfectly designed and um, and um, and communicated to to the passengers to the customers. Um, it is. It cannot be measured. It's always a very subjective. We are working with a lot of people, and a lot of people tell us exactly what is the beyond expectations for them. So, the, so this is, this gives a feedback. Later on, we must have this kind of a, um, customer ambassadors who are checking the journey from the arrival to the airport to the gate. We give you a task, okay, um, for this to, for these volunteers. They come to the airport and they check the whole process, how they feel. Also, airports are going into into um, um, presenting something special in the in the whole process, like like fragrances. It's a is a huge um, impact now in in the Middle East, but in other parts of Europe as well. They're introducing diffusers, in, uh, and also, for example, it's a, a small touch. We many airports started to introduce music in in washrooms, so like this kind of an elevator music that you hear. Um, making it more like a, um, a hotel experience because if you go to a hotel in a restaurant you go to a washroom so you can hear the music and that 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 is the whole whole idea is to calm down the passenger and why is it important because once the passenger is calm uh, the passenger is, is willing to spend more in the retail and retail uh, yes, outlets spend more money. yes definitely One, one thing it's, which I think is interesting that uh, if you look at, for example, the um, you know every starting last last year we started uh, working with the with, uh, with the ASQ results. Mm -hmm. The ACI is doing the surveys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, every quarter we have the um, the results. And um, in the last quarter it was very surprising to see that 
that the staff attitude at the airport is at Sofia Airport is is outstanding, mm -hmm. which is compared to other parts of Europe where usually the infrastructure is much better. Here is the other way around. The infrastructure is lower. Uh, but the staff attitude, from check-in to security to even police authority, the uh, passengers appreciate that they are helpful. So it was a surprise for, for us, because normally in other countries and other airports it's the other way around. Mm -hmm.